suburban public school middle school morning. I woke up, I put on my octagon-shaped glasses because I thought, hey, these are unique, and so am I. <laughs> <laughs> then I brushed my braces-filled teeth and I took my metal face all the way to the bus stop. And when I got on the bus, I waved to all my friends, but none of them waved back because I don't have any friends. <laughs> <laughs> but I see Nicole, Eddie, Shannon, Everyone is doing the morning ritual. Everyone is forging their parents' signature on the morning agenda. Now, what is the morning agenda, you may ask? Or maybe you just don't remember. The morning agenda is the public school system way of saying, hey, we don't have enough reasons to punish children for no reason. You know what we should do? Give parents homework. <laughs> so thus, then after that, there was homework for your homework. And every single day of every single damn school day, your parents had to sign your agenda in the morning acknowledging that you had had homework. And if you forgot three times, you got a written warning. And if you forgot three times after that, you got an in-school suspension. And in-school suspension meant no field day. And field day was the best day. <laughs> we all know that. <laughs> and none of these kids' parents had their back, like my mom had my back. You see, the tobaccos, we're a plotting family. We're schemers by trade. We're Sicilian. <laughs> if there's a $5 problem, you can bet we have a $10 solution. I had forgotten three times to get my mom to sign the morning agenda. And Mrs. Truman, my homeroom teacher, she gave me a written warning. I got in trouble, and I hate getting in trouble. Not like, oh, it gives me a bad day. Like, it reminds me of my mortality. <laughs> As I handed my mom's written letter of shame, I wasn't sure what she was going to do. She took it. She crumpled it up. She looked out the back window and squinted at her cherry blossom tree, and she said, those damn bureaucrats. <laughs> They're trying to bring my baby girl down. <laughs> so you know what my mom did? My mom went to Staples, and she bought three stamps. Two of her signature and one of my dad's signature. <laughs> Obviously for the purposes of the morning agenda. Now you might be going, uh, Stephanie, why didn't you just forge the signature like everybody else? You see, the problem was I had no friends, so I sat at the front of the bus, and Miss Kathy, the bus driver, might see me forge the signature, so I chickened out until I got to homeroom, waiting for Miss Truman, my homeroom teacher, to turn around. She never did. Three days, three times later, are we getting it? That's why? Yeah? That's why I didn't do it? As my mom handed me this forbidden fruit, she knew I had not yet quite understood that there is a gray area between telling the truth and telling lies. You know, for a 12-year-old, it's black and white. She said to me, Stephanie, yeah, if you get caught, lie. Lie through your teeth. <laughs> your teeth. <laughs> and I accepted that with this great power came a great responsibility. I had to be precise. I couldn't just willy-nilly use these stamps. I had to avoid suspicion. So sometimes, some mornings, I would stamp the stamp really, really hard so it looked like my mom's pen was bleeding. Sometimes I'd stamp it really lightly like my mom was in a hurry. Sometimes I stamped it upside down like we were both like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> sometimes, sometimes, I would use my dad's stamp. Because you see, my dad's a pilot. He wouldn't be home every morning to sign the agenda, but it was the third Tuesday of the month and my dad was home, so it was time. Click the back of the stamp, we got to school, I get into homeroom, Mrs. Truman. She's also our history teacher. She's writing something on the board about Marxism, Benjamin, Hamilton, I don't know. <laughs> but I can still see everyone is still forging their parents' signature on the morning agenda. And as I get to my desk, I make sure to save my seat for my friend, but they never show up. It's because I don't have any friends. <laughs> And as the bell rings, all the boys unclick their pens, all the girls bring out the agendas from underneath their desk. And Mrs. Truman goes student to student, checking their agenda.
Now Mrs. Truman is starting to stare at my agenda just a little too long. And I can tell I'm getting nervous because my chest is turning red. But I pretend I'm reading my book. Same book I've been reading all year. It's a pretty big book. It's like Miz. <laughs> but it's a 25 point AR book, so I'm dedicated to it. <laughs> I can tell she's still hovering over me and trying to remain calm and cool. And, and she says it. Um, Stephanie, can I go speak out in the hall with you? <laughs> she takes my agenda and I slide out from under my desk. I follow her and I look to all my friends, but they don't look back because... <laughs> I get out in the hall and I'm trying to remain calm, cool, collected. I can't crack before the pressure's even started. And Mrs. Truman opens with... Stephanie, this does not look like your father's signature, but how is that possible? It's a stamp. <laughs> it looks more like the previous signatures than someone's actual real signature, but I give a convincing argument. Now that's my dad's signature. <laughs> that's my dad's signature. <laughs> Mrs. Truman's not buying it, so she starts to pull out this whole good cop, bad cop routine, except she's both cops. And of course, she opens with good cop. Oh, Stephanie, you should be telling me the truth, because if you tell me the truth, you will win an award. Mm -hmm. And you will accept that award on the morning announcements as for being the most honest student in the entire school. Now, wouldn't you like that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I would like that. Who wouldn't want to be on the morning announcements? But then I heard my mother's voice crack from the shadows of my mind. Lie, Stephanie. Lie through your teeth. So I said to her, no, that's my dad's signature. <laughs> that's my dad's signature. <laughs> Mrs. Truman's fed up by now. So she pulls out the big guns. Now, Stephanie, you better be telling me the truth right now. <laughs> or I will take this agenda to the front office where we have a machine. And that machine will tell me whether or not this is a forgery. <laughs> Now I'm starting to get really confused because I feel like she's lying, but then I'm like, how messed up would it be for a teacher to lie to a student to get them to tell the truth? So she must be telling the truth. But then I have to remember, if I'm, like the consequences for this forgery are probably worse than in-school suspension, which really meant no field day. So I said to her, that's my dad's signature. <laughs> that's my dad's signature. <laughs> Mrs. Truman sends me back to homeroom. And I'm trying, and she goes to the front office, and I'm trying to imagine what this forgery machine even looks like. <laughs> I imagine this giant transformer-like head, and as you open the mouth and insert my agenda and close it, it just starts blinking red. School goes dark, all the TVs turn on, and say, Stephanie's a liar! <laughs> And she calls my dad. Hello, Mr. Tobacco. This is Mrs. Truman, Stephanie's homeroom teacher. Yeah, I'm good. How are you? Yes. Um, I have a question. I believe Stephanie may have forged the morning agenda, so I would just like to hear it from you. Did you sign the morning agenda? Unfortunately, my dad wasn't really in on this whole scheme me and my mom had. But my dad knows that snitches get stitches. <laughs> the agenda's not in front of me, so I don't know. I would need the agenda in front of me. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it, Dad. Nailed it. And with this inconclusive answer, Mrs. Truman pulls me out of third period, and she is livid. Now, Stephanie, <laughs> you best be telling me the truth, right? Now, the forgery <laughs> machine came back negative, but I want to hear it from your lips. Is this a forgery? <laughs> I realize she is not going to let this go. <laughs> so I pull out the one last card I have to make her leave me alone. And that card is my Kim Kardashian ugly cry card. <laughs> my face begins to widen. My eyes get really squinty. My lips disappear. I make sure water is running from my eyes and from my nose into my mouth. <laughs> the sounds or the words I'm saying are just sounds, but everyone can hear me. I'm just echoing down the hall. And Mrs. Truman.
woman has the nerve to say to me, oh, honey, it's not that big a deal. <laughs> not that big a deal? <laughs> not that big a deal. Okay, um, I'm not the one that's been interrogating a 12-year-old for the past three hours <laughs> on something that will never, ever, ever matter. I repetitively lie to teach a student about honesty? Grown adults are so weird. And bear with me, this is gonna rhyme. They like to make, break, and recreate rules to fit their own personal agendas. Their morning agendas. <laughs> <laughs> I went home, and I was feeling really confused about this whole thing. I asked my mom for some advice, and she sat me down, she poured me a glass of milk, she said to me, Stephanie, people are going to tell you otherwise, but honesty is not the best policy. Not everyone deserves it from you, especially bureaucrats. <laughs>